All right, guys, going to cut out the outline for this pattern. This is the non-drive side pattern. And uh, all I've basically done is just created a, a template. So I've just printed that out on the printer and uh, drawing the lines up and uh, sticky tape it together. And you just drew the outline. Uh, on top here, I've got the features that need to be glued on to give us a little bit more thickness to, uh, to machine out some of the, uh, the bosses that we've got uh, protruding up and the collars that we've got protruding up. So I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut this out and uh, we'll see how that goes. Little bit of an issue with the blade wandering off there. We'll see how that goes, but uh, what I need to do, we can always build that up with a bit of bog. But everything else came out nicely squared. All right, we'll get over to the CNC and uh, we'll start getting this uh, set up. Well, before we do, I've got to just glue on our features first. I'll get that happening first. All right, guys, here's our stock ready to go. Uh, it looks a bit like a patchwork quilt at the moment. I've had to uh, add bits and pieces to it all over the place. When I made up my stencil, I must have stuffed up in the scale or done something wrong. And uh, it came out 20 millimeters too short when I did the X and Y coordinates on the table to get the, uh, the zero point set up to get it orientated correctly on the table. But anyway, it's all fixed up now. Any little anomalies that we get out of this, we can just patch up with uh, Builder's Bog or, um, or Body Filler, Car Filler, and uh, we won't even know once it's all painted. So, like I said, it looks like a patchwork quilt, but it's going to do the job for us anyway. And a lot of that stuff is probably going to be machined away anyway when we get uh, when we get down to it. All right, let's get this onto the table fasten down and uh, let's get some cutting started. So right, guys, we've got our, our patchwork stock sitting upside down on the wasteboard at the moment. And what I've found is there's a little bit of a bow in here. So I need to take that off because this is the side where the two patterns are going to meet when we do the uh, round me up and the sam. And it's a bit of a pain when they don't quite meet and they do tend to rock on each other. So we're going to lick maybe a millimetre off this surface here. Then we can flip it upside down and we can start setting up for our, uh, for our code and our machining. All right, I'm just going to do this manually on the, uh, on the router. So we'll get that on the go now. All right, that's cleaned up really nicely. I'll give that a bit of a, a quick sand and uh, we'll get it cleaned up, flip it over and get it set up in our datum points and uh, we'll make a start. I imagine this is probably gonna run a good six to seven hours on this code. There's, uh, there's quite a bit of machining in this. Anyway, we'll be able to start. Right, no, code's all loaded. We've set up our stock. We've got our zero point. I'll, uh, I'll press the start button and we'll get into it. I'm going to put the camera down because if there's anything that does go wrong on the startup, I need to react fairly quickly to get, uh, to get it to stop. So uh, we'll come back when we're on the way.
just finished. That has run since 10 o'clock this morning. It's now just before 9 o'clock at night so it's been going for nearly 11 hours to cut that pattern out. Now I'll get the vacuum cleaner out. I'll give this a vacuum down and let's just have a look at the finish and what we're dealing with. Eh? But from what I can see that is perfect. Alright, that is very, very smooth. So this isn't going to need any finishing at all. So all I'm going to do is put a high build spray putty on this. And just give it a very, very light sand back. And that will be ready. Alright, let's get it unscrewed off the wasteboard and uh, we'll see how the thing looks in hand. Well, just before we finish up, I thought I'd quickly show you my 3-axis CNC router. As you can see, it's made out of wood. All the rails are down out of um, old cylinder rods that I got uh, from Hydraulics Repair. And uh, I've cast up all the supports in aluminium. Let me show them up. Uh, all Acme threads except this one here, which is a ball screw, so got fairly cheap, and uh, it's all stepper drive, and I'm running this through Mark III. And as you can see, all the rods are independently mounted and can be independently set to uh, ensure absolute accuracy. And this thing machines, all that's made out of wood. It machines dead nuts spot on. And then there is the magic box underneath there, so uh, I built all the electrics in that. Originally started off with some drives from uh, Oakley up in Sydney. It's, uh, it's got the geckos in it now. All right, well, uh, we'll get into the workshop and let's have a close look at this pattern, eh? All right, that's a bit better to look at it. So just caught a little bit of the, the builder's bog I had there on the side. Let's give it a light touch with a file. You see the core prints? It's just got a little, little tiny pattern in there, but, you know, it's not much at all. That's going to fill up nice with the builder's bog. Sorry, with the, um, with the spray putty. See the points that I fastened it down onto the wasteboard, and um, I'll bog those up. All right, so that is the uh, non-drive side. We'll do the uh, drive side next, which has got the uh, the pancake top on it. So we're going to do that in two halves or two parts, as we said in the previous video when we uh, when you showed you the uh, the inventor files. All right, guys. Well, it's one down. A few more to go, plus the core boxes. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.